Dave Burkett here along with Sean, Sean Windsor. Sean, Sean, I didn't say that well. But Dave Burkett here along with Sean Windsor after the Lions opened the regular season with a 27-27 tie against the Arizona Cardinals. And Sean, uh, God, watching that game, to me it felt almost – it was. It was worse than last year's loss, season opening loss to the New York Jets just because – the Lions were in such control of this game. I mean, they were up 18 points early in the fourth quarter, squander that lead, tie against a, a, another team starting a rookie quarterback. I know it's on the road. I know they, you know, Kyler Murray looked good at times, but you but you still, you, you can't blow an 18-point lead in such an important game. No, and you hate to say it's so important in the first game of the year, but that's kind of where we're at. And, and in terms of worse, I think what you mean is psychologically, right? I mean, for the fan base, for the team, because obviously last year, that was just a huge debacle, and they didn't look prepared or ready against the Jets when right. they got blown out at home on Monday night back Absolutely. at Ford Field. That's what maybe made this a little tougher, because they, for stretches of the game, they looked nothing like they did a year ago. Yep. I mean, they actually looked sort of free and easy a little bit offensively. They looked like they had some explosiveness about them. The new offense was kind of humming along. T.J. Hawkinson sets a record yeah. for all time, the, the best debut for a tight end in the history of the league, and you tie it, to squander that, and, and look, I don't even, I don't think this Cardinals team is good. Maybe they'll surprise me. You know, again, Murray has some talent. There's no doubt about that. They, they do have, you know, Larry Fitzgerald is still, he's a Hall of Fame player. You know, they do have a couple pass rushers. I think Stafford was sacked three times today. But, but this is a team that won three games a year ago. It's not a good team. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, like you said, look, the, the overall performance, it was much better than a year ago. But for a team that is coming off a 6-10 and 10 season that doesn't have much margin for error to begin with, to, to lose to a team like the Cardinals on the road in a game that you should have been that you should have run away with. That's what leaves me walking away from this with, with the sourest feeling. And I think players in the locker room felt that way too. It was it was pretty somber in there and several players said it felt like a loss. I mean Devon Kennard said that, Justin Coleman said that, Matthew Stafford even said that after the game. You just it's a game that for a team that had playoff aspirations, I don't know what this does to the psyche. No, starting off all in one, you're right. It, it's We'll see next week, right, when they come back against a, who knows, a relatively good Three Chargers. good teams coming up now, right. Chargers, Chiefs, and Eagles. Right. They all scored more than 30 in their first game. And I think the other thing about tonight, too, is, again, you, you, they, I don't know about putting them away, putting them away, you know, they weren't yeah. going to score 50 points. But when it was 24-6, the game should have ended up, what, 31-10 or 31-12 yeah. or, or something like that. They needed one drive, one more drive, basically. And, look, that's what good teams do. They're not a good team, maybe. But they have a chance to be at least a decent team, or at least we thought so. And for a couple of quarters, yeah, that's kind of what they look like. Look, the first quarter, kind of slow starting both ways. Second quarter, the Lions got hot. And, and you mentioned Hawkinson. I mean, if you're looking for bright spots today, T.J. Hawkinson had an excellent debut. I mean, he showed why he was the number eight pick of the draft. 131 yards receiving, um, caught a touchdown late in the game. He really was a playmaker out there. It, an element that this offense lacked for really for a long time. I, I mean, you know – it, he wasn't the only one either. I, I, I'm just going through my head. Devon Kennard had a nice game. I thought they Margaret did some Jones good things. had a nice game. Nice catch at the he, end there. He, I mean, Stafford played Amendola fairly well. played well in his new in his new role. By the Got way, out of bounds at the end there. He did. That, he did. That was a mistake. But other than that, I mean, you know, the nice touchdown pass. I think which was sprung a little bit, not sprung, but Hawkinson made that possible, wasn't it? Wasn't it that play where he sort of almost had a legal chip block a little bit? But that's the other part of Hawkinson. He can block. Yeah. He's got some swag to him. He's got a little bit of nasty to him in a good way. Yeah, no, look, I, I stopped counting in the, the fourth quarter because I was writing my first of three different game stories, I guess. But, uh, you know, the Lions used two tight ends, and it was about 50% of their snaps. It was Hawkinson and Jesse James out there a lot, and, and I think we will see that a lot this year. I mean, it's it's that they have such a big offense when they do that. They didn't run the ball well particularly tonight, but but I thought at least the passing game showed some life. Well, they especially didn't run the ball when Arizona knew they were going to run the ball, but when they didn't, yeah. they ran the ball a little bit better. But I'm with you when the two tight end sets were out there for Daryl Bevel's new offense, or at least relative to the Lions, it looked uh, it didn't look like it was a slog. It didn't right. look heavy, even though it there was, was big. Crea- there was some creativity right. that it, it showed. And because Jesse James can run a little bit too. Yeah. I mean, both those guys can – I mean, they're not 4-4 guys, but you could see the possibilities. And, again, it gets back to your point of do we really have to start out this way? Is, right. it, is, the, is the end already here? The first week in September? Yeah. Because I know that's what it felt like last year on Monday night, well, right? Well, and, and that's the thing. It's not impossible, obviously, to overcome a, an 0-0-1 start, you know, a tie to start the season. But it just the, – the taste that it's going to leave the fan base with, the taste that it's going to leave the well, players with. you can hear it today. You can hear it tonight. Just, yeah, it, it's, 
this hour. All right, so look, before we get going, there's one play I think that a lot of fans out there are talking about, the, the timeout. Mm-hmm. Third and five, the play clock's running down. Um, about two two minutes, 30 yeah, seconds, two, something like that. A little like over that. 240, but if they complete the pass, they win the game, essentially. They can right, probably they the run deal. the timeout. Yeah. yeah, they can probably run the timeout. Matthew Stafford steps up to the line. There's a second on the play clock. Maybe he gets a snap off. Throws complete to J.D. McKissick. The Lions call a timeout. Matt Patricia said after the game that you know he was the one calling the timeouts. He basically Daryl Bevel was the one who signaled for the timeout, but Patricia um, told Bevel to, to call the timeout. Stafford looked angry about it on the sideline he after it happened. He, he yelled, "Trust me!" a couple times. I think there was an expletive in there right before he did it. He was right behind Matt Patricia when he started to do that. Um, look. It, on one level, it, it's easy to, to second guess in hindsight, and you can't, you know, you don't call that timeout. But I understand what he's doing there too. Like, you know, maybe this is sticking up for Patricia in some ways. It's always easier to, to you know, to, to cr- criticize, critique the result, and, and the result took a first down, a game clinching first down, probably off the board. But they were scrambling there. You know, that's a timeout pan- that I think a lot of teams take, though. I agree, and, and you hate to say panic, and maybe he did, but if you, he's standing there looking at the clock, or somebody on the sidelines looking at the clock, and it gets down to what one, yeah, two, or one. one. It was definitely one, and they didn't want third and ten. Absolutely. And I mean, it's you're right. It is easy to criticize. Obviously, the game is over at that yeah. point. But I, I think <laughs> here's the thing, Dave, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think the reason that play is so painful is because to the Lion fan base, to y'all. It's just over and yeah. over and over. Maybe it's not that kind of timeout. Maybe it's something else. Yeah. But you, you don't even know where to rank this Completely. loss in terms of weird losses, painful losses. Sort of even numb rank, there's, yeah. Exactly. There's so many of them. And I, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say I don't think the season's quite over. I, I felt that way last yeah. year, Monday night. I don't know about you. No, I thought it was done. I did. I did. <laughs> I completely thought it was done yeah. last year. I don't know that it's completely done right now. It well, probably – I mean, it – it Look, I wrote like last week based on that this was a must-win game and I they didn't win it. So I, I can only come away just feeling disappointed about everything that went on, that, that the Lions squandered an opportunity. And I don't think, you know, the, we saw the snowball really take effect last year and it, re, it was really from training camp on and, and they couldn't recover. I don't know that that's going to happen. I just, I also don't know that they're good enough to overcome losing a game like this either. You know, you're, I, I thought they were a 500 right. type team to begin with. So maybe have, maybe they'll sneak one out. Do you have a problem with the timeout? I mean, do you, do you as you just look at Patricia taking that timeout? Well, out I there? mean, I understand why he did it. I guess in a way he shouldn't have. I, look, Stafford was saying, "Trust me, I'm a ten year vet." Yeah. I don't know if he said that or not. Yeah, that's, that's kind of what he's saying. What it right? like. Trust me. I think we can all read those lips. I mean, right. they were, it was clear enough. Don't mac, don't yeah. micromanage. You know. Yeah. And, and does Stafford deserve that trust? I mean. Can we talk about him? Just I know it's getting long, but yeah. just real quickly. Absolutely. What, 385 yards, something like that? Three TDs, no picks. I thought he played pretty well today. He did. He missed a couple here and there, but I don't know. I, I thought he, he also could... had two interceptions drop, one at the very end. At the very end. It should have been. He, a, he a did. Game. And he had the, and he had the fumble, Cardinals. and uh, I think Taylor Decker struggled a little bit at the left tackle, and, and that led to one of the fumbles, yeah. right? Decker uh, gave up two sacks, had four penalties. Stafford lost two. Well, he. he, he on the sacks, he fumbled both times, lost one of them. So it wasn't a turnover-free game. But I, I thought Matt played pretty well. Um, I think I gave him a B in my grade. Story I, of his career, though, right? Yeah, I mean, no, he put throw him for almost four hundred yards, three touchdowns, and and you're screaming, you're yelling at your coach. Trust me, I mean that's just kind of. Well, I think you're bad for him. Look, though. you know that there's a lot of a lot of things at play here, right? Patricia has the the Achilles injury, so he's he's on crutches. It's not like he's in his normal spot. Maybe if, if that injury doesn't happen, maybe he's the one that's right next to the ref and he he waits that extra split second to make sure that, that Stafford can get the playoff. I, I think there's a lot that goes on to that, but I think you bring up a valid point too that, uh, you know, maybe it is. Maybe you do have to trust your veteran quarterback in that situation not to take uh, a delayed game penalty. You know, we've, we've seen Stafford do a lot of, like, veteran-type moves over the course of his career, getting plays off when somebody jumps off sides, throwing downfield, hard count. We saw a hard count tonight. Where yeah, he, it worked. Yeah, and he was angry at that when the officials didn't set the ball quick enough. And then he, he gets the hard count. He congratulates his lineman for, for right. staying in place. And so I, I think we've seen some of those those savvy veteran moves out of Stafford. So, you know, maybe you're right. Maybe you do have to trust your quarterback there. I do understand, though, as that play clock's ticking down, that – you don't, yeah. You don't want to blow the play there, Patricia. By the way, after in his answer, his he kind of, he didn't get defensive or anything, but he did say, "Hey, execute the next play." Absolutely, and they right. I mean, and he's right out. about that, but it's, at the same time, you know, you can't execute every single play. It's football, so yeah. 
Oh. And in theory, that was Bevel's A1 call, right, on that third and five that they're going to in that situation. And he ended up and throwing an incompletion down the field to Galladay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So a lot of missed opportunities. That's the story of the night for the, the Lions here. Story of the uh, century. <laughs> story of the last century. God, for the last I know. 60 I know. years, right? Uh. Um, well, one of these days it'll change, maybe. I don't know if we'll be around to see <laughs> well, it, cover it, but who knows. Maybe the season isn't over. Next week, uh, Los Angeles Chargers come to town. And uh, like you said, tough game. Pretty good team coming in. They they really have three straight now: the Chargers, the the uh, Chiefs, and, and the, the Eagles, Eagles and, on the road. And, yeah, yeah, so it's uh, it's it's not going to be an easy road here for the Lions. But can't have any more performances like they did tonight. Twenty-seven, twenty-seven tie uh, against the Arizona Cardinals in their season opener. For Sean Windsor, I'm Dave Burkett, Freep.com.